Okay. <clears throat> now, if we look at at um, any other, um, or at least of the other two um, wave equations that we've talked about, they're both second order partial differential equations. Okay, and and so this is actually a general property of um, of uh, wave equations, transverse wave equations, or or and wave equations in general, and so um, we can guess that uh, that the uh, wave equation for matter waves, the Schrodinger equation, is also going to be a second order differential equation. In fact, a partial differential equation. Okay, and um, an analogy with with um, other waves, like again, if we look at uh, the solution to the wave equations for the electromagnetic for electromagnetic uh, waves then we know then the basic solutions are plane waves okay these e and b as i've written them are are plane wave solutions and so if we just guess that the solution to the schrodinger equation are also going to be plane waves okay then we can just write down that guess and then see where it takes us so this is where this derivation becomes heuristic in the sense that we're not we're not from first principles deriving the, the wave equation, the uh, Schrodinger equation, but we're making some guesses which will allow us to, in some sense, verify or um, justify it. Okay. So if we make this, if we make the assumption again that the that the, that we have some wave function, um, and we're going to call that psi, uh, as a, that's a function of x and t, and this is one d, one dimensional, and we. Uh, and then we write down the most general plane wave solution that we can, which is the, which is an amplitude times a the complex uh, uh, times a plane wave with a complex phase, e to the i k x minus omega t, which is equal to uh, e I mean a times cosine k k x minus omega t plus i sine k x minus omega t. So we have a a real part of the wave function. Um, and an imaginary part of the wave function, but it's important to note that the real part and imaginary parts are actually real. Okay, so the imaginary part just comes in with this i. So this this allows us to so th this allows us to represent sort of two waves, two parts of the wave uh, in a very compact notation. So instead of having to tray, you know, uh, always write these two parts, they're actually together. But they have it's important that they have a a a particular phase relationship between the two parts. As given by this imaginary number i here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, so uh, so if we basically uh, take, if we imagine that we have the solution, we guess that, and now we look at the derivatives because again it's a differential equation. So let's look at the time and space derivatives. Okay. What we find if we take the um, the uh, the fir the uh, Derivative of the plane of the way of the uh, solution, the wave uh, function psi with respect to time. Okay, uh, then we get the uh, we bring down the I minus i omega. And we get minus i omega times uh, times the plane wave by I mean times the plane wave right back. Okay, so it's equal to minus i times omega times the um, times the wave function right back. Okay, remember the derivative of an exponential is just an exponential. All right, so uh, what we then notice is that if we multiply d psi dt by ih bar, then if you multiply, then that's uh, minus i omega times ih bar. i times minus i is just one, and then you have h bar omega. So you have this is equal to h bar omega times psi, and um, the as we as we wrote on um, one of the previous slides, the energy, the De Broglie relationship for energy is is that the energy is equal to h bar omega, so we can write h bar omega psi is equal to e psi. If we look at the spatial derivative, okay, of uh, uh, of the um, wave function. Then we get something very similar. I times k. We just bring down the i k, and again i k times the wave function right back. If we take the second derivative, i k times i k is actually minus k squared, and again times the times the wave function right back. Okay, and so in this case, we have uh, this relationship. 